Hello, welcome to Pro Modeler. I'm Philip Flory. This particular build, what we're going to be doing is the new Kinetic 148 scale Hawkeye. Um, now, this is the E2C version. Um, obviously, there is other kits of this available. There's the Japanese Defense Force 1, um, and obviously, there's the Hawkeye 2000. Basically, the kits are all exactly the same. It's just a few little different sprues in there for the different things. Obviously, before now, all that we've had is a resin version of this one. Um, those that you know the site uh, will know that obviously I had a few problems building that one, um, but obviously, this is a nice new injection molded kit. Quite a different aircraft to do. It's nice to see that Kinetic are uh, bringing out some obviously uh, models into you know not the normal, shall we say? So it's very nice of them. Instructions um, pretty basic uh, but very well detailed. Um, so actually, what you've got is very, very clear, crisp um, actual artwork on there, um, which is quite nice. But as I say, there isn't many stages to this, so it sort of covers them all quite quickly. It's not a complicated aircraft to go together, but certainly due to uh, a lot of the sub assemblies joining up and things like that, it's going to be well worth doing dry fitting with these uh, and just making sure everything lines up before you come along with glue. Uh, the markings, obviously we've got one um, for the Golden Eagles which is uh, VAW112 uh, for the Navy version. This particular box that I've got here is actually the French box, <clears throat> so it actually looks like this and it says it's got the flotilla markings here but actually does come with the American ones as well. So hopefully you'll get both sets of um, decal placement sheets that show the colour call outs which is pretty straightforward because it's just... Um, uh, FS16440 uh, special standard codes, so pretty straightforward. The kit itself, um, it's going to be quite big, uh, as you can see, 148 scale aircraft, so we're talking this type of size. Okay, I think the uh, perhaps the panel lines are a little bit big for its scale, but certainly the riveting is a nice detailed touch and things like that. We've got a large cockpit area to go on the front here which obviously we're going to have to take a little bit of time about and sanding it in and getting that to go uh, very nicely. give you an idea uh, of the size of this, this is for the frisbee at the top uh, which is almost frisbee size in itself. Uh, so yeah that uh, just shows you quite how big this one's going to be, it's going to be quite a lump. The beauty with doing naval aircraft, obviously the wings all fold up and things like that, this is something that's great for this kit because the wings fold up as well so what we can do we can have it in a stowed configuration which means you, when you put it on your display shelf or in your your display case it's not going to take up loads and loads of room uh, perhaps like normal aircraft too. Looking forward to the build so let's get on with it. Okay then so we've got all the um, parts off the sprues we've actually got up. Now the instructions themselves are um, not exactly the best uh, and easiest one there's pretty much uh, in here as how many steps we've got in total uh, 13 steps to complete the entire build which isn't a massive amount when you go through the the amount of complexities on this. Um, there's lots of exploded diagrams um, of various parts. Now, to tell you the truth, I've already built one of these. It's the second one I'm doing, so I've actually learned a few things along the way. Uh, namely, that the actual uh, engine parts are extremely complex to get together and very hard to get right to all sit and be you know, in the right place and not look um, a totally sort of skew with and out of place and obviously without using a lot of filler. So that's really why I've come back and redoing this a second time round. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to really run through the build. Now, obviously, internally, we're not going to be able to see much inside the actual cockpit, although there are some nice little touches, as you can see in here. But the thing is, unless you're going to get in there and have a good old peek through the glass, you're not going to see much about it. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a, um, a basically a quick job on the cockpit, which will give us an overall effect, but really there is very little point detailing it, um, as I say, because you can't really see it. And what I can do then, I can focus on other areas which are problem areas, um, which are, for instance, um, I've already got one done here, which is these engine nauticals, which are a bit of a nightmare to get together. But I'll talk you through how I do mine now, um, which will hopefully give you, um, make it a lot easier ride and you won't get all the mistakes I had the first time round. So what we're going to do, we're going to roughly stick to the actual um, instructions, but we're going to deviate at a few little areas which I'll point out as we go along. So basically, what I've done, um, I've got these cockpits all off of the sprue already. It's pretty much straightforward. You've actually got, um, obviously, a rear bulkhead for the cockpit. You can see here, there's no detail on that whatsoever. You've got the tub, if you like, if you want to call it that, or the flight deck. Um, Pre-molded, um, put in the actual... Um, 
uh, which you call them rudder pedals, so that's the word. Um, and obviously the instrument detailing there again isn't over the top. There is some nice little details there, but it's nothing you know you'd really get excited about. So we're not going to worry too much about those. What we have got though um, is the seats, which there again are a bit boring, a bit plain. Um, we can ha add some harnesses to those. I'm going to do some simple little harnesses for those, which are actually put in. And obviously we've got a center console. This top one here is going to go at the top face down. You'll never see that, um, but there again, it's there. It's a nice little touch. The yokes, flight yokes, very, very basic um, but there again they're there it will give you an overall um, detail effect of them if we get some light in there so what I'm going to do with this one I'm going to put it all together and then we're going to go around there and pick out all the details by hand as I said if I was going to go in and I wanted it to be absolutely perfect I'll go along obviously and I would take care and obviously we'd add little bits of wiring perhaps and we do all the switches individually but we're not going to see it because it's not an open cockpit like perhaps on an f-16 and things like that now if I just bring another light in Get some more light around here. One second. This one to stay. I'll be very happy. There we go. Um, so there we go. What we're going to do then? Tell me a liquid cement. As I say, you could use any glue you like, but I just tend to do these really for speed. Now, what we do? We're just putting. Obviously, as you can see on the close-up, just around these areas. This is just to fit the seats in. We'll get them in first. Okay, and they're straightforward it in. Nothing too exciting about that. Okay, we just put a drop down each of the insides. There we've got the centre console. Same thing again, what we'll do, we'll just pop this straight in. Just sits down there and we're just going to put a drop. And it's the great thing we're using extra thin glue. The capillary action goes off and whips around and does all the work for you. So you don't have to worry too much about those. Okay, the actual uh, instrument panel itself we'll put on afterwards because I'm going to dry brush it um, to give it a little bit of life and everything else and I've just noticed that I've got a little bit of sprue peg still sticking up so we'll just take care of that now just like that but what we do is say we'll fix that on afterwards what we can put on now is the rear bulkhead as I say um, it's got ejector pin marks all over it on one side so obviously be careful with those we'll just pop that in and we'll just glue that there again from the rear so that goes in just like that. Okay, and then with a kinetic kits, um, I'm not going to take anything away from their manufacturing skills and everything else like that. But the one thing you will notice if you've never built one before is that the fit issue, it all works, it all goes together, don't get me wrong, but you do tend to get huge, great ejector pin ones, like on the back here. I've already cut them off, but they were massive. They hang right out. Um, and you do just find that sometimes it, it's not like if you've used Tamiya or Hasagara and things like that, that literally you're going to come along and it's just going to go together. These sometimes get little bits of flashing around, just little bits. It's not quite as crisp moulding, perhaps, as perhaps you've been used to in the past if this is your first kinetic kit. If you've built some of their F-16 range, which quite frankly are fantastic, um, they're lovely kits because they cover such a wide um, a variety of sort of F-16s. But there again, the trouble is they're a little bit flashy, as we call it, which is uh, the little bits of plastic, um, which is like an over mould, if you like. Um, they tend to be just a little bit um, not as sharp, shall we say, uh, without being putting them down too much. So there we go. That's the cockpit section on we've actually got here. Then what we're going to do, we're going to spray obviously the inside um, of the actual uh, inner cockpit area here on the fuselage and we're going to do this now obviously it calls out all the colors which are quite nicely done they're all done in the um, guns colors um, but obviously if you're going to be thinking uh, for a color match if you're perhaps using Tamiya XF54 is a good internal cockpit color so what we'll do we'll give this a shake and we'll just get that all sort of working. Now, at the same time, when you're cutting out, obviously your sprue pegs off of the kit marks, just be a little bit careful with them. Don't over sand them, because otherwise you're gonna make big scoops, and obviously it's a big fuselage area to go together, and you end up gonna be doing a lot and lot of filling. Now, what we've got down in here, this is the internal uh, part, if you like, that you actually see uh, from the cabin door. So that's gonna sit just in like this. 
And there again, you can spray it outward or inward, whichever way you want to do it. Um, obviously, it's got some details in here. Look at your references to see what they're like, or you could just do a general sort of dry brushing job over the top to pick out the lines and hoses. Because if you look at the way it goes on the close up, um, it's quite hard to see uh, bits going on in there. It's also going to be quite hard to paint in there as well. So what we do, we're going to spray that as a separate on here, and then we'll glue it on afterwards and things like that. So what we'll do, we'll just get some paint knocked up in the airbrush and then we okay, so we've got these parts basically dry now and all we've done we put a little bit of modeling clay um, or white tack as we call it here in the UK uh, on the back of the smaller parts just so we can stick them in some things like this and just keep them off the ground it makes them easier to handle right okay airbrush is set to 30 psi we've got just some XF54 um, which is as I said it's basically a color match for um, the internal cockpit areas of most US modern aircraft. So what we're going to do, we have just got some Tamiya X20A thinners, which is obviously Tamiya's own thinners. We need just a pipette. So we just grab a pipette, we're just gonna put a little bit in there. And then obviously a 50-50 mix with paint. We've just got a cotton, uh, cocktail stick here, and we just give this a quick mix in there just like that now if you make this more drier mix than wetter now when I say dry and wetter what I'm actually getting on about is when you spray it down it dries very very quickly when it hits so if you're using like a flat coat so by using your paint a little bit thicker um, and a higher air pressure it will dry faster um, it doesn't have to be particularly glamorous this bit of work and it doesn't have to be very neat um, so that's why it's better to do that because it's more of a speed thing if it's quite a wet coat it takes a bit longer to dry so we just check our flow which we're happy about, then all we're going to do is come in from all the angles. And that's just the compressor cutting in. Um, I'm just going to go around from all the areas where you can see. So it's like a bit of a dusty coat going on. And then what we do, we pick out the detail afterwards. But as you can see, um, I don't know how well you can pick out in the close-up, it's dry already um, from spraying it in. So what we do, we just do the boarding area. Just like so. Then we've got these internals. Remember to do the sides, because you will see those through the glass. And just do the tops as well, just in case you happen to see any of the little parts. So we do that, and obviously we've got the black work, the instrument panel. Obviously the back of it is all grey, like that. And what we'll do is we'll pick out obviously the details a little bit later. So what we can do, we just do the inside, just in case you happen to see anything from in that way. So we're just going around there. Then obviously we've got the boarding area, just the spray around as well. Make sure that's all happy. And the same thing around that cockpit bit, just like that. So we're all happy with how those are. So all we've got is just got a little bit of the paint left over. We'll just tip that in the colour cup. Just like that. We'll just put that in the cleaning station. I'll get on and clean that in a moment. And then what we can do is pop the lid on, keep that all neat. Okay, so we're gonna let those dry off. Um, and as they're drying off, then what we do, we can come back and actually put the black work in um, for obviously for the instrument panels and the bits like that and paint the flight yoke and the seats and really just sort of bring them to life. Okay, so as you can see, we've got some um, flat black um, and we've just put it in there just to liven it up and to give some shadowing and depth really when we look through the actual um, boarding area. So what we've got here, we already started here, I'll show you again in a minute. Um, I've painted some of them, as you can see, some of the panels. Basically, I've got a nice small um, flat brush here. We've got some Tamiya Black, so what I do, pop it onto the, the, the lid, just like this. And this way, it just gives you a little bit more control. Now, if you're using these Tamiya brushes, the thing I like about them is they're actually sort of chisel cut. There's a higher edge and a lower, so they're on a slight slab, but it's very small. But this one is great, because we can fit just in here just like this. So what we're going to do, we're going to start at the back, okay, and we're just going to make one nice dragging movement all the way down. Pick a bit up, just move to the other side, and just the same again. Now obviously we've got large switches sticking up, so we just flip it around, go to the other side, okay, and just come in from the other way. 
just to square them up and if you've got any areas where there's a big switch and it's not showing through we can just pop them off just like that okay a bit more paint just for this top area running out a bit there <clears throat> Okay, and we can just pull this gently up. Okay, we'll just run it a little bit more to the rear. Take care of those. Okay, so we can let that dry off now. Um, and then we can come back and actually do the seats and some of the control columns. We've got to paint those black as well. In fact, I'll do those now just to show you. Um, if you look at the reference photos, the control column itself is black. <coughs> If I just quickly do these, it's not the actual part that goes down to the floor, literally just the column, the yoke itself. There we go. So those are done just like that. You might be able to see that on the close up. There we go. So we can do the seats, we'll do those in a minute. But what I want to show you here is some of the dry brushing. Now obviously the panel itself, um, when you look at the reference photos of them, this is what we call the Legacy um, Hawkeye or the C. There's a new D coming out um, and there's the Hawkeye 2000 which is the one in the middle. This is the older version which has got all the analog um, instruments or dials in other words. Okay, so what we're going to do is just knock off most of the black work off of here. Then all we're going to do is just gently Oh, well, you can see if I bring you in a little bit closer, okay, then what we do, we're just going to gently, continuously dry brushing, and you should be able to start to see the instruments coming to life. Just like that. So we're just continuously painting. And there we go. You can see them coming up just like that. So we we'll just move around here at the top. Now, if you wanted to, you, there's various options. You could um, obviously fill in these dials and that, but there again, unfortunately, we are hardly going to see them. And I've got some uh, a reference photo uh, just here, um, which if I just bring up, you can see here, which shows obviously this top area being blank, um, and then obviously um, the other bits all being picked out in various colours. So if you wanted to, you could use this reference photo to sort of give you an idea of where various parts are. But just for the moment, we're just going to do the top. <clears throat> like this one, these side bits appear to be black, looking at that reference photo, and then obviously we're just going to make an edge underneath. Just like that. And then we're going to go right from the other side. Okay up there so that gives us our instrument panel very very basic but what we can do we can pop around with a little bit of um, silver in a minute just to liven it up so what we do we're just gonna keeping the brush nice and flat we can just liven it all up a little bit but there we go that does it Quite a nice one. It's not a million miles off of the real thing, but you say if you wanted to, you could pick out the centre of the dials with some colours and things like that. But unfortunately, as we said before, we're really not going to see it. Now the seats themselves, um, they're a nice sort of green beigey colour. So what we do, they're very quite a dark sort of uh, greeny colour. So what we're going to do, um, just doing this off the top of my head, we're going to use olive green. There again, good old shake with the olive green. <clears throat> we'll just bring it out a little bit on this one. Okay, now, I haven't used these colours recently. I'm not going to worry about cleaning out the brush. We're just going to get straight in there. Just get some olive green. Very straightforward. Then as you can see, there's various lines you can follow around as you go. But we're just going to, for argument's sake, doing it across. Now, if you're worried about hand painting acrylics, the best way to do it, get a load on your brush, put it on and literally pull it round. Don't try and brush stroke them in. If you pull it round, you get a nice uh, finish to it. Whereas say, if you're pulling them around, you do tend to get brush marks in it, things like that. So we just do the backs. Okay, just down in the cushiony area. Just across, just down on this other one. Okay, headrests, make sure you get the sides, the tops, 
obviously the fronts just like so so obviously if you're watching the uh, DVD version of this hopefully they will be on it will be the Collet Air which is a, a resin version of this uh, kit which wasn't the easiest kit to work with but it's got a more detailed cockpit than this one's going to have so if you wanted to look at your references you can have a quick look at those as I say just for this one all we're going to do we're going to put some very simple seat belts uh, some harnesses made out of Tamiya tape a little bit of paint and it'll just be so you can see something through the front so what we're going to do is do the front seat cushions And there we go, quick little job on there. We're gonna pop around with some silver when that's dried and get the, the seat cushions put in, um, the seat belts on there and the harnesses and things like that. But I'd say really that was just a, a quick little clean up if you like uh, of doing that. So what we do, just clean that brush out here. So there we go, let me just move those out. So we'll just let them dry off a moment, those parts there, then we can come back, a little bit of silver, dry brush some silver just to liven them up and bring them all together and then what we can do we can put some seat belts in and really we can sort of pump this one inside. Okay so you can see um, nice little shiny things. The reason I've done for these I was thinking if you can look through the glass you're not going to see anything inside the cockpit. So what I've done is um, a bit like ice skaters and all the rest of it I've exaggerated the effect so you can see it through thick glass because the glass itself um, is very thick um, it's not very translucent you're not going to be able to see very well through it. So what I've done is basically just made things a little bit brighter than they would be. So that way if you do get somebody really going to be interested and wants to have a look through he's going to be able to see the dials showing up. So what I've done I've just done cocktail stick a little bit of silver, um, a little method I'll show you in a moment, and done it just like that. Same way, um, obviously here we have on the instrument panels uh, on the close-up, you can see we've popped around a little bit of dry brushing with the silver just to liven it all up and make it in. Now from there you might be able to see, although it's probably better on this camera over here, you can see the actual um, harnesses uh, been put in there just like that. So I'll show you what we did with that. Now this here is um, jammy dog tape, quite nice. Uh, comes in a few different sizes, he says, looking for his other sizes, here we go. So in here you've sort of got a, um, a basically like one mil, um, two mil, and there's probably five mil here that I'm actually using. Now the great thing about these is, because they're so thin, they bend very nicely, and many, many a time, we've all done it, you get your Tamiya tape, you know, in the roll like this, bring it out, stick it down and you try and cut them, but you can never cut it in a nice straight line. This saves all that messing about. And for the money, they're very relatively cheap. You can just go along, buy a couple of rolls of this and they last forever. And to be honest, I've had these now for about a year um, and I'm still no way even through um, half of them. So anyway, we're gonna use the one mil. So all we're gonna do, this is just a quick, very, very simple way. Now there is other ways of doing this. And um, my good friend Ant on the site did a fantastic tutorial, if you're a member of the site, um, on making up um, uh, harnesses with little metal rigging and buckles and things like that. And he did an absolute stunning job. Um, but this is really a real basic way of doing it. So what we're gonna do, using a cocktail stick, because it just helps move them around. What I'll do is I'll just move these off of here pop this here and if I pop a little bit of blue tech just in here and then hopefully this will push in you guys can follow what I'm doing okay so there we go the have it there very simple then all we've got is to say I've got a cocktail stick because what we're going to do is just going to come along place it over the shoulders as it would be in reality it would fold down the back okay and we just leave it hanging up for a second, grab ourselves another bit, and we just cut ourselves another one. Similar length, doesn't have to be spot on, because you can always trim them up afterwards. Okay, same thing again, I'm gonna do this cack handed. So normally I would turn it all round to face me, but I thought I'd be awkward today. Now pop them in. Now the trouble is when you're using um, any type of tape like this, a bit like the self-adhesive ones, the sticky will give way after a while and you are gonna find it's gonna lift and it's gonna peel away. So what I've got just down here out of sight is on a little bit of paper. I've actually got some super glue on a little bit of tape so it doesn't stick to my desk. And all I'm gonna do is pop along and I'm just gonna put a dab of super glue just over each little bit of tape 
to stick it down. Now what will happen is that will dry off and it will pin it down permanently um, and we won't have to worry about it pinging up. So all we're going to do, we're going to take our harnesses then and we're going to bring them down and they're a little bit long. So if I just grab my slightly sharper scissors, got them just here, we can just cut them to length. Okay, and we can have a look and we can roughly work out the same lengths like that. Okay, and you can just come along and then stick them down where you want them. Just like that. So you want them to have a bit of a bend or something on them just to make them look a, a little bit different. And the other way as well, um, if you do two seats like this, do two at two different lengths because it gives the idea that the crew are different sizes, which is a funny little touch, but it's something I always tend to do. Same thing again, tiny bit of super glue just to hold down into place. He says not being able to get any. Here we go. Just on like that. Okay, then we'll, all you do is just the same for the bottom. So there we go, we just cut a little bit of tape. Okay, because of how this is, what I tend to do is I'll just put some super glue on the bottom part where it's gonna stick. Same thing again, it's a bit like dentistry this. Okay, we're just gonna put that in to where it's set. Get it in the rough area. Of where we want it to be. And we'll just let that stick a second. Okay, same on the other side. Grab a little bit more super glue just down on there. All to do is just That one in there like that. Now the lap belts, what I tend to do is have them hanging longer. Okay, so then all you do, basically let those just dry off just for a second. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just trim up again, just a little bit off the ends. Okay, trying to keep them square if I'm honest. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is just ruck them up a little bit and just push them back and get them to bulge up and bend and, you know, so it looks a little bit more natural. Just like that. Okay, moment of truth. You come along with your paint. Okay, now I'm rushing this slightly. You probably want to wait a little bit to let the super glue dry off, but basically all we do is come along with our brush, very fine brush, and flood the area. If I just tilt this towards me a little bit so I can see. Honestly guys, I need to see this a little bit. And all you do is just flood the area. If you don't flood it and you just have it there, what happens is the tape just shows all through and you've had it. So what we do, we just... It just helps it curve all round the tape and the bits and pieces like that. I'm going to brush it a little bit. And obviously off over the shoulders. Now I say, normally, if this was in a, a modern jet, you'd take a great deal of care because everyone's going to see this. But quite frankly, unless you're a real heavy fan of the aircraft, I can't imagine that many people taking the opportunity to squint through the glass with a microscope and try and see what I'm up to here. So there we go. They're on just like that okay now the same way as I did the dials all I've got here if we just I've got some silver you could use anybody's silver but if you know me I quite like using the um, games workshop or Citadel's silvers because um, they're great they've got a very very fine count all I do on the end here you can see it on the main one so you get a little bit tiny bit on the end 
okay just come along and all we're going to do with it on the cocktail stick is just dab there's one little harness there's two and as I say we're doing in bright silver so they show up a little bit more okay one down there and one down there and there we go from a distance as you can see it looks quite quite good and obviously from the glasswork looking through because we're not going to see much it should look quite nice so now we can have to be a bit careful on this one because it's the silver works still wet we can come along and we can fit our main part in here I'm hoping it should just sit in there we go and there is our cockpit done on the Hawkeye which is as I say very very basic but it uh, it will do for what we need for this particular purpose but there we go that bit's done now same with the other bits so what we do we'll get this bits all cleaned up and then by looking at the, the main parts as you can see the only parts that are going to go on the inside really are the glass work which is something we'll take care of in a moment and we get these in so what we're going to do I'm going to stick these in now uh, so this one goes in up here just like that okay and then obviously we'll just grab our extra thin okay that goes in at the top there we go that's in so when we look in from this way you can see on the close up it gives us our impression that there's lots going on in there um, even though there really isn't okay so that's that one done and then the cockpit area will go in as well so that's just going to fit in something like this which is in there but what we're going to do is paint up by hand just this area at the front here black just to cater you that I'm going to have to get some weight in the front here now it's saying on the instructions it wants 50 uh, grams of ballast in the front which is basically lead fishing weights anything you can find in there as long as it's 50 grams you can put pennies in this one because it's quite a big area um, I've got a little bit of rolled lead um, so I'll be popping a bit in there but I always add just a little bit more just in case um, so in this one it says 50 grams it probably sounds about right uh, but just to be sure I'm going to stick 60 grams right in the front here um, to take care of that.